Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this uh, nifty little star map that you can use in VR and non-VR. In non-VR you'll be able to like point your mouse at it and click. In VR you can uh, grab it and change locations and it'll stream in a different level based on uh, the star you go to. Alright, so let me just take off my VR headset here. Okay, so to get started, we'll set up the leveling system, which is a bit seems a bit complicated at first, but it's really not. So we'll just go to levels and uh, create a new folder, or not a new folder, new level. Call it uh, tilt level tutorial. <clears throat> Selected, and uh, we'll just drag in the sky sphere so we can see directional light, sky light. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up your levels window. <clears throat> okay, so um, the first thing we'll do is make, well, we're going to need to make another level, so we'll call it uh, space, I guess. Random space. So we'll name it. We'll save all this. I'm just going to get rid of YouTube tut. It's an old video. Okay, so in random space, we're just going to place some random stars. You know what? We'll just make a random star actor just because it's faster for me to program it, honestly. So uh, right click, actor, random star, and um, light a sphere. We'll go to the construction script and uh, set world scale 3D. We'll drag off this, we'll go to two float and we'll do random float in range and we'll do 500 to 5000 and uh, yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> I'm not going to bother making a random material. Uh, um, working? I set it too high. Let's do 20. Okay, sorry. Uh, so. In random space, um, place our star, but we want to randomize its location as well. Uh, set relative location. Um, split this. Uh, get random foot and range. Negative 5,000, or negative 500 and 500. Get a 500, 500. Now we can just put this in the center. You know, we're going to need to make this way more. So. See how that works. Okay, so as you can see, it spawns the star. Well, as you can kind of see, it spawns the star in a random location and random size. <clears throat> so we'll just put this at zero and uh, actually want to make that the sphere, not the default scene component. That's no problem. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so there we go. Sorry about that. So we're spawning a random sun, which is just a sphere, like a planet, I guess. Can even spawn a bunch of them, but I won't get into that. And this is
<clears throat> so as you can see, um, we toggle the visibility of random space. It makes the star up here. So what we'll do is go into our blueprints, open level blueprint. We'll type one, and we'll do load. And level name random space make visible after load and uh, we'll type two actually we'll do unload first unload stream level random space and uh, now we'll just do new editor window So it unloads it and it loads it up again. <clears throat> now it doesn't randomize it every time because uh, that's not, you have to set the code for that. It's just making it visible. So um, it's like the same level, but you can call, you can do various things to set up uh, randomization. Or you can just uh, load random levels as well. Um, but the point is that we can now load and unload the level. So now let's get to the actual galaxy map because that's more fun than level streaming, which is boring and tedious. So we'll go to blueprints and we'll make a new blueprint and uh, an actor and we'll call it BP Galaxy Map. And uh, I'm just going to add a static mesh and we're going to add, I already have a uh, mesh setup to use. By MSGDI, on uh, you can check it out on CG Trader. It's the Capital Ship Bridge, and do um, is we'll add a component. We'll add a box collision, and we're gonna connect this to the scene root. Scale it down. Let's drag it up. <clears throat> and uh, what was it? 28, I think. It's clearly not right at all. So, anyway. Um, just scale this box up to uh, match the uh, size that you want. The stars are going to spawn inside this, what we're doing here. I want it to be too high. Okay. All right, compile, save. <clears throat> so now we'll go to the event graph, and we're going to make some functions. The first one will be uh, get star location. And uh, make a variable. Whoops, local variable, not a boolean. <clears throat> Make it a vector. Call it temp star lock. And we'll do get box extent, get scale box extent, random point in bounding box, get world location. And we'll do set star lock, temp star lock. And we're going to check later if this is within range of the other ones, but yeah, we'll just do it now, actually. Add unique. And we'll add an array of star locations. Star locations. And we're going to do four each. And we'll do minus vector minus vector, and we'll do Star lock is what we're subtracting. Length. We'll check if the length is greater than um, a variable we'll make. We'll do uh, min star distance, which we'll expose. So we can edit it, make it 20. And if it is, well, if it isn't, actually, we'll set a state to failure. <clears throat> Spot is good. 
Set that to false. By default, it'll be true. Whoops, put it to false. So if spot is good, we'll add the temporary star location to the star locations. Um, if it isn't, Actually, let's just make this pure, just because I like making stuff pure. It's more fun. Um, so, you drag this over here so it spawns one of these. <clears throat> seated. False. Seated. False. Okay, so... Event graph. I'll just do a custom event. Get star locations. Oops, we already had that. No, I must get star location. Star location, and we'll make a integer number of stars. You know, we don't need to make this um, the event graph. We'll do a function set star locations. Okay, so for each for loop, rather star location, it succeeded. We'll do uh, we'll add it star locations. Add unique. If it failed, uh, I guess we'll just do a while loop actually. So if we're not succeeding, we'll add new locations. Uh, we'll also clear this since we're setting the star locations. So clear. Okay, and we'll do a new function, uh, draw stars, do star locations for each loop. Draw a debug here. And we'll do some fanciness here by making the radius random float and range. Whoops. Random float and range 5, 10. We'll divide that by 2 and round it. Get the number of segments. We'll make this 12. Duration 0, thickness. Uh, no, it's 12.8. Now, I think we can use a construction script for this. The star locations, all stars. And um, maybe we can try again. No, maybe we can't use a constructor script without a have to oh yeah, it's drawing them for a second. Um so what was it? Trust stars. Duration five B. Okay, so it's spawning the stars. Um it's not quite what we want yet though. We'll just say zero. Gonna add a plane so we can actually Oops. I've already made a character, so I'm just gonna use that. Um 
Nothing fancy about him. Oh, it's because we're working in random space right now. So yeah, that's uh, one of the big problems with level streaming, is right now everything is under random space. So we need to control X, click persistent level, control V. There we go. So yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I hate that. <laughs> I do it all the time. You have to double click, whatever level you double click is the current level, um, which is highlighted blue. And that's which your stuff goes under. So it would appear if we hit one, but uh, yeah. So if you screw that up, you can just hit Control X and then go to the level you want and paste it again. So see here. Um, all right. So we'll go to our galaxy map. Uh, let's go to the construction ships. Go to the event graph. Begin play. We'll get star locations on begin play, and then on tick we'll draw the stars. We'll set the duration back to zero, and we'll set the color to red, and play. Okay. Oh, right. What are we doing? Um... Or randomizing it on tick. How did I do it on the other time? I just did this and uh, let me just look at how I did it before. Just set the duration high. Do it once, not on tick. I don't know why I was thinking of doing it on tick here. But it does seem like something screwed up with our uh, star generation. I think we. Uh, All right, so there we go. <clears throat> so we're spawning the star positions and drawing a little debug of them, but that's not very interactable yet, so we need to make it interactable. Um, and then randomize like what background we spawn based on that. So... Uh, what do we do here? Two ways we can handle this. But okay, so we'll make um, we'll go back to our blueprints. I'm just gonna delete this older one since we don't need this anymore. Actually, um, so we'll add uh, a new actor and we'll call it BP Interactable Star, and we'll just add a sphere. Collision, and I'm just gonna make this not hidden in game so I can see its size. But we're gonna make its radius like, well, we'll just set the radius. We'll make it a variable. Begin play. Set radius. Put that to variable. Radius. And I think we might need a delay. Okay, so we'll go back to the galaxy map and um, and graph draw stars. Um, we'll add interactable stars, and you could do the draw debug in the stars instead, but 
go with what we're doing here. Um, so star locations for each. Add spawn actor from class. Extractable star. And uh, we need to make radius exposed on spawn. And uh, we didn't save it. Okay, so we'll, here's what we'll do. We'll make an array of star sizes. Okay, so we'll do an array of floats. Star sizes. Add unique. And uh, we'll do random button range. And then for draw stars, we'll just get the star size based on the array. Multiply this by 1.5 to see the stars have more body. And to get star locations, we're gonna, or sorry, set star locations. We want to clear our star sizes as well. So it doesn't pile up. Okay, add interactable stars. Get star size. All right, let's see. So as you can see, there's uh, kind of hard to see, but if there is a sphere inside them, I think. We'll just stop doing the draw, just so we can um, see stars. Oh no, I was totally actually wrong. I think it's because we didn't uh, actually set Add interactable stars. All right, so now we have the interactable stars. Uh oh, what's this? Uh, whatever. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so the radius we're doing. I need to go back to drawing the debug. Draw and debug. Draw stars. Okay. Now we can hide this again. And I'll just make it so you can um, point at them with F and select them. Uh, okay, so I'll add a custom event in Directable Star Target or er, Select. So I'm gonna go to our character, uh, which is, like I said, there's not much to him. He just spawns some VR stuff and has movement. 
Um, so we'll do F key. Then we'll do custom event. Trace. Trace. Line trace by channel. Get player camera. Yeah, we'll just select this. Get world location plus get forward vector times eight hundred and fifty. We'll break the hit results and we'll cast to interactable star. We'll do select. And on select, we will <clears throat> um, you know what? Let's do something fancy. Event tick do gate. We'll do another event, custom event D select. But if selected. We'll draw debug sphere and we'll get world location for this radius plus one. Actually, let's add plus three, I guess. Yeah, 2.5. Segments radius divided by two. There it was 1.5, but I'll do a bit less round. And we'll make it a different color. We'll make it, I guess, blue. Thickness one, duration zero should be good. And um, I was hoping we could add rotation to it, but I guess you can't do that with the debug sphere. No, so there's no point to even using tick then. Uh, all right, we'll just connect this to select. I just I thought you'd be able to add rotation, but that was um, maybe it's based on the actor. I don't know. Either way, we'll just make this 55. Uh, it's not working, so Okay, there we go. The turn on overlaps. So when you hit F, it selects it. Kind of. Yep, works. Okay, so we have selecting the stars now, but that doesn't really do much yet. But I think this is a good spot to take a break. This has become 30 minutes for something I just wanted to make in like 10 minutes. Uh, so, thanks for watching, and um, I might make a part two, but, um, I mean, you've, you have all the pieces now to, to do it. You just, you know, when you when you call select on the interactable star, you, instead of drawing a debug, you can, well, you can add, like, a window that says you want to jump here, and then yes, and then you'd call the level streaming. And uh, so that's that's it. Should be enough to get you started making a galaxy map like this so thanks for watching and uh check out my other tutorials bye